Welcome to this information video presented by the Association of Professional Engineers and Geoscientists of Alberta. We are providing information on proposals submitted to the government by the Association of Science and Engineering Technology Professionals of Alberta. Asset. The proposals submitted in February of 2017 recommend changes to scopes of practice for and regulation of engineering and geoscience technologists in Alberta. APEGA is completing a legislative review to update and modernize the Engineering and Geosciences Professions Act. The Act is the guiding legislation that grants the professions of engineering and geoscience the right to self-regulate. This responsibility is granted to APEGA and ASSA by the provincial government. The protection of public interest and safety is the primary mandate of the Act the regulations, and of APEGA and ASSET. The Act is the guiding legislation that grants APEGA the right to license and regulate and grant protected title to professional engineers and geoscientists, licensees, and professional licensees. The Act also authorizes APEGA to regulate the practice of engineering and geoscience through a protected scope of practice. The Act is also the guiding legislation that grants ASSET the right to register and grant protected title to technologists and technicians for use by its members, and to jointly regulate professional technologists with APEGA. Throughout the legislative review, APEGA's discussions with ASSET and the government have been guided by three principles. APEGA holds paramount the public safety of Albertans and the Alberta environment. APEGA will continue to effectively regulate the practice of engineering and geoscience to serve the public interest in Alberta. APEGA supports a harmonized and consistent approach across Canada with respect to the labor mobility of technologists. Throughout the process, APEGA has consulted with members and permit holders on the recommendations being proposed to the government on the changes to the EGP Act. APEGA has been working cooperatively and meeting frequently with ASSET and the government on the legislative review for three years. Unfortunately, at the end of the process, ASSET and APEGA could not agree on the recommendations. As such, APEGA and ASSET submitted separate sets of recommendations to the government in February of 2017. The two separate submissions have put the legislative review with the government on hold. At the government's request, APEGA and ASSET submitted responses to each other's proposals. The government of Alberta will ultimately make the final decision on any legislative changes. APEGA believes that changes proposed by ASSET will create unnecessary risk to public safety if approved by the government. APEGA also believes it is important to inform members and permit holders of these proposals. What APEGA's interpretation and position is, and prepare them to answer questions from fellow members and permit holders if asked. We will cover current legislation within the Act, assets proposed changes, and the reasons APEGA is concerned about the potential risk to public safety. The three areas within asset submission of proposed changes that will be reviewed are, first, eliminating APEGA's involvement in the joint regulation of professional technologists, ultimately resulting in two separate regulators of engineering and geoscience acting independently. Second, expanding the scope of practice for professional technologists to be exactly the same as that of a professional licensee. Third, introducing an independent scope of practice for certified engineering technologists without the oversight of licensed professionals and without the authority to authenticate. We will discuss each area of concern in a moment, but first, we will review some relevant background information. Professional engineers, professional geoscientists, licensees, and professional licensees are licensed and regulated by APEGA. Currently, Joint Regulation of Professional Technologists, also referred to as PTEX, is done through joint boards and committees. Boards and committees are made up of an equal number of APEGA and ASSET appointed members, 
and one public member appointed by the government of Alberta. They are the same as OPEGA's current boards and committees and have the same mandate and authority. The Act gives ASSET the authority to administer all joint boards and committees, except the Joint Councils Committee. Once licensed through joint regulation, a PTEC becomes an ASSET member. Ongoing oversight and regulation of PTECs, including any necessary discipline actions, is the joint accountability of a PEGA and ASSET through the joint boards and committees. Other categories of technologists and technicians, such as certified engineering technologists, also known as CETs, and certified technicians, also known as CTECs, once registered, become members and are regulated by ASSET alone. CETs and CTECs are granted a protected title only and do not have the right to independently practice engineering or geoscience. To understand APEGA's concern, it is helpful to compare the current scopes of practice for professional engineers and geoscientists, professional licensees, and professional technologists. The education and experience requirements for each are indicative of the levels of complexity and competency required to fulfill each role. Professional engineers and professional geoscientists must have a four-year university degree combined with demonstrating four years of acceptable experience. These education and experience requirements prepare professional engineers and geoscientists to undertake complex problem solving, to use complex methodologies, and to apply high degrees of judgment. A professional engineer or geoscientist is licensed with a full scope of practice, meaning they are authorized to practice engineering or geoscience without limitations or exclusions. The shaded area shows the breadth and complexity of a full scope of practice for a professional engineer or geoscientist. A professional licensee, also known as a PL, requires two years of acceptable post-secondary education plus six years of acceptable experience supervised by a licensed professional. Their experience must include and demonstrate two years within their defined PL limited scope of practice. The PL scope of practice is narrower than that of a professional engineer or geoscientist. The PL limited scope is unique to each individual based on their specific experience and requires an individual assessment of their competencies. PLs may work independently and must have demonstrated the ability to apply complex problem solving using complex methodologies within their defined and limited scopes. They may independently authenticate within their limited scope. Professional technologists require two years of acceptable post-secondary education plus six years of acceptable experience supervised by a licensed professional. Their experience must include and demonstrate two years within their defined PTEC limited scope of practice. PTECs are licensed with a scope of practice that is to problem solve using routine application of existing codes and standards and established methodologies. The PTEC scope of practice is more limited than a PL and is confined to practicing within the application of routine codes and standards and does not move into complex problem solving and methodologies. A PTEC scope is unique to each individual based on their specific experience and requires an individual assessment of their competencies. They may work independently and may authenticate their work within their limited scope. The factors that differentiate a scope of practice for a professional engineer or geoscientist, a professional licensee, and a professional technologist are education and the evidence demonstrating experience using complex problem solving and methodologies and the ability to apply a high degree of judgment. Complex problem solving and complex methodologies are vital in situations where the code or standard is not prescriptive and may only stipulate the outcome to be achieved without specific directions on how to achieve the outcome. We will now review APEGA's responses to the government on the three changes proposed by ASSET. First, APEGA does not support ASSET's proposal to eliminate joint regulation of PTECs. APEGA's sole mandate is to regulate the practice of engineering and geoscience in the public interest 
PTEX practice engineering and geoscience within a limited scope. As such, APEGA must be involved in the regulation of PTEX. It is important that professional engineers and geoscientists be involved in determining the boundaries between routine codes and standards versus complex problem solving and complex methodologies. They understand the full scope of practice and can best determine limited scopes of practice based on education and experience. The removal of joint boards and committees would result in two regulators of engineering and geoscience acting independently. This introduces risks associated with unclear and inappropriate scopes of practice that could jeopardize public interest and safety. To maintain Albertans' confidence in the integrity and quality of engineering and geoscience in Alberta, APEGA must maintain legislated oversight of the practice of engineering and geoscience and must be involved in determining the scopes of practice of everyone who practices engineering and geoscience. The second asset proposal that APEGA does not support is expanding the scope of practice for PTEX. ACID is proposing that professional technologists be given the same scope of practice as professional licensees, including the authority to authenticate and take responsibility for their work. This proposes that a PTEC can undertake complex problem solving using complex methodologies and applying high levels of judgment. ACID's proposal to simply expand the PTEC scope to be equivalent to a PL scope without the demonstrated experience requirements puts the public at risk. Before an individual is given a limited license to practice using complex methodologies, they must provide evidence that they have the necessary competency within that scope. Although some individual PTEX may be able to demonstrate appropriate experience and competency within an expanded scope, there is a high risk to public safety to automatically apply an expanded scope to all PTEX. The assessment of whether a technologist has the competency to practice in an expanded PL scope beyond their codified PTEC scope must be done by a PEGA as the regulator that assesses the qualifications of individuals for higher level complex engineering and geoscience licensure that go beyond codes and standards. Qualified PTECs have an existing pathway to an expanded scope of practice through the APEGA Professional Licensee Designation and Scope of Practice. The PTEC designation within an independent scope of practice exists only in Alberta. Because of this, there are currently labor mobility issues across Canada, as it is not recognized in other jurisdictions. An expanded scope could further complicate this issue. The third and final asset proposal which APEGA does not support is the introduction of an independent scope of practice for Certified Engineering Technologists, or CETs. A CET is a graduate of an acceptable two-year applied science, engineering, or information technology diploma program and must demonstrate two years of acceptable experience. They are granted the protected title of Certified Engineering Technologist. As a regulated member of ASSET under Section 92.2 Subsection 2 of the EGP Act, they must work under the direct supervision of a licensed professional. ASSET has proposed that CETs be allowed to independently undertake the routine application of industry-recognized codes, standards, procedures, practices, and established engineering or geoscience principles and methodologies. This would be done without supervision of a licensed professional and without the accountability and responsibility to authenticate their work. The description of this scope of practice for a CET is the same as the current scope of practice that is granted to PTEX, but without the education and experience requirements for a PTEC. The current system of supervising CETs is working well. ASSET has not identified any risk to public safety as a rationale for changing it. Scope of practice taking responsibility for work, and authentication or sign-off authority are inextricably linked in the practice of engineering and geoscience. Authentication is the primary mechanism to provide the evidence for ensuring public protection by demonstrating that the work was done by a professional with the necessary specialized expertise and competency to do the work. 
the professional takes responsibility for the work, and the public can rely on it. There is a high potential for confusion and risk to the public with assets proposal. The decision for when authentication is required rests with a licensed professional who takes responsibility for the work being done. Under assets proposal, CETs who will not be taking responsibility for the work and who do not know when authentication is required will be deciding whether authentication is required. This poses a significant risk to the public. How does the public know what work must be authenticated and who can do what and who is ultimately responsible and accountable for that work? How does a CET who does not have the authority to authenticate ultimately make the decision on what does and what does not need authentication and escalation to a licensed professional? No other jurisdiction in Canada provides an independent scope of practice to CETs because of public safety. This could also contribute to labor mobility difficulties, as we have seen with the current PTEX. APEGA recognizes the valuable contribution technologists make to engineering and geoscience teams. However, a scope of practice is not simply a reward or recognition for meeting certain qualifications. There needs to be corresponding accountability and responsibility for ensuring protection of the public safety and public interest that accompanies a scope of practice. The current pathway for a CET to acquire a scope of practice exists through the PTEC designation and scope of practice. APEGA would support adding to the legislation a definition for the occupation of engineering and geoscience technology in Alberta. The definition of occupation of engineering and geoscience technology could be used as a tool to identify who needs to apply for registration as a CET based on the description of work they do. It is not intended to give CETs an independent scope of practice or to describe activities that they can do independently without oversight. It would be consistent with definitions now used in several provinces. In summary, APEGA does not support eliminating joint regulation, expanded scope of practice for PTEX, and an independent scope of practice for CETs. Making these changes would increase risk to public safety, allow complex engineering and geoscience work to be done by individuals without appropriate education and experience, create two independent regulators for engineering and geoscience, and create inconsistent and incompatible approaches with other provinces. APEGA believes that the current scopes of practice protect the public. The pathway for CETs to gain a scope of practice is to apply for the PTEC designation. The pathway for PTEX to gain an expanded scope of practice is to apply for the PL designation. And the practice of engineering and geoscience is regulated by APEGA and jointly by APEGA and ASSET. Comments and questions can be forwarded to legislative-review at apega.ca.